the earth. That meteorite could have been diverted by the sun god, but was not. Because our evolution had gone to a level where it was becoming dangerous for us to have that type of power, and the sun gods felt that it was time for us to learn about destruction. And it was time for us to have this 5,000 year period in which we learn about war, destruction, fire, and all this, so that we would eventually be ready to go back to the ark, go back to the power of the vacuum, but this time with the maturity that we needed in order to have this power. I believe we're approaching the return of the Ark of the Covenant. When you follow the traditions, you find that this time is when the Ark is supposed to come back. And when we see the evolution of the Ark, we find that the Ark had gone through a long chain of events that brought the knowledge all over the world. And actually, all of our evolution is based on the return of this power to our civilization because this power is the power that liberates us from the shackle of entropy and reductionism. It allows us to become centropic, to have infinite amount of energy, to have infinite amount of power. To, uh, it allows us to regain our place in the brotherhood and sisterhood of the galaxy and to re-enter in contact with advanced civilization that have been observing us for the past 5,000 years. But this time we have to figure, out, figure it out ourselves. I followed many... Oh, my batteries are fully charged. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the ark in the Bible in the Old Testament is the technology in the New Testament Jesus which actually true name is Emmanuel which is mentioned in the Bible Emmanuel is thought to be the living ark Well, there's an interesting thing that happened there. You see, when the high priest at the ark in the temple of Solomon, they knew that if Jerusalem was attacked, they would have to take the ark out of Jerusalem somewhere. So they had a B plan, obviously, for the ark in case there was something to happen with the temple of Solomon. The Temple of Solomon was built as concentric walls with the Holy of Holy in the middle. In the, these walls were extremely thick and they were to protect the initiate from the Ark of the Covenant. The initiate had go through all sorts of initiation to eventually go from one wall to the other to the other to get to the Holy of Holy. It was the largest temple ever built on earth. But during the first century AD, the Philistine took over Jerusalem. There was a B plan for the Ark. That B plan was called the um, that was a Dead Sea community on the side of the Dead Sea that was the um, Essenes. 
Now, the first person that talked about the Essene and that community was Edgar Cayce. Edgar Cayce, in one of his readings, said there was a community on the side of the Dead Sea that had written scrolls and that we were going to find these scroll, scrolls. Now, when he said that, I think it was in the 30s, all the geology, uh, archaeologists said that was bunk because there was no writing whatsoever about that society on the side of the Red Sea. There was no record of it anywhere. That was because it was the B plan for the Ark. They weren't advertising. <laughs> so when they took the Ark out of uh, the Temple of Solomon, they brought it to the Essene, which was a community of high priests that was constantly being made ready in case the Ark would show up. Go ahead. Well, I think that the whole family was with the Essene for a long time. The Essene recorded the coming of the Ark. This is not my imagination. In the Essene scrolls that were found, you know that there was over 5,000 scrolls, or at, le at least 3,000, I'm sorry, scrolls that were found. There's only 100 that have been released to the public. One of these that was released to the public is a very, very eccentric scroll. It's not written on papyrus. It's written on copper. The copper that it's written on is the purest copper ever found on earth. There is no purest copper ever found anywhere else. <laughs> no. What does the copper scroll... Now, obviously, the copper scroll were written on copper to make sure it would survive the ages. And what did the copper scrolls talk about? It talked about the coming of the Ark at the Essene community. It says, literally that the ark came to their temple. And it describes where it hid all of the components that were kept around the ark. How many components do you think there was? 64. There is exactly 64 lines describing the components of the ark. Some of these components have now been found. It was oils and incense and stuff that they kept around the ark that were part of what you needed to be safe when you went into the ark room. You had to wear certain clothing. You had to cover your eyes. You had to have certain oils on your skin for the conductivity all these things. Do you guys understand where I'm going there? Okay. If some of, have you, some of you read Elizabeth Heisch's book called Initiation? Note, in Elizabeth Heisch's book, when she's initiated, she's initiated in front of the Ark of the Covenant inside the Grand Pyramid of Jesus. That book is extremely accurate. I haven't seen... I've done a lot of research. I assure you, that book is extremely accurate. And she actually describes going towards the ark, and she actually describes smelling negative ions in the air. So you actually... Uh, she's actually talking about the arc generating electromagnetic field and ionizing the air. Well, you know, they have now found some of the components around the Dead Sea Scrolls of the Ark. And when 
they did, it turned out that they found, I don't have this picture, but they found the place where the Essenes say that they hid the ark because they had it for a fairly long time. The place where they hid the ark was a cavern across from where they lived, across from the temple. When they opened that cavern, and this is research you can find on the net, when they opened that cavern, there was a red, uh, I'm sorry, there was a blue iridescent spot in the middle of it. There was NASA engineers